Welcome to Emulex Chalk Talk. I'm Bill Fields, Director of System Engineering, and today we'd like to talk about architecting for optimal performance in virtualized environments. In doing so, we'll identify some of the key areas in the I.O. system that can impact performance. We'll gain a better understanding of the HBA capabilities and how they impact performance, identify some key adapter parameters, and also identify additional technologies that can impact quality of service. So as we're architecting our virtualized infrastructures, the hardware that's available to us now has greater capability than it ever has. We have more CPUs with more CPU cores. We have larger memory spaces. We have storage infrastructures that are built for high performance, for handling large number of requests and high transaction rates. But we still get into an area where we can have lots of potential oversubscription points. Virtualization is designed for oversubscription. It's how we manage that that's going to keep our end users and customers happy. The diagram here depicts, take your pick, you can have either blades in a chassis or servers in a rack. We have multiple VMs running on our individual servers. Virtualization software, their hypervisors and their management capability allow us the ability that when we have a poor performing VM to move that workload down to another server that has more processing capability or isn't utilized as much as, of course, the one that you're bringing it from. So we can migrate workloads for either availability or for quality of service to meet service level agreements. Um, on the storage side, we can configure individual volumes so that we don't overlap spindles and create oversubscription points. However, the potential does exist to oversubscribe individual spindles. Connectivity points. We can have multiple connectivity points into our storage processors. However, if we have a path failure, we can increase the workload on an individual one, which will negatively impact performance as well. So keep in mind that the hypervisor itself, the operating system in the SCSI stack, the storage adapter, the logical adapter, the physical network, the front end port, the storage processor, the back end port, the spindle, all of these areas that I've highlighted in red are our potential oversubscription points. And we have some flexibility to work around that. But when talking about the I.O. infrastructure, having been with Emulex for a number of years working with our customers, the question always inevitably comes back to me with respect to queue depths. And they say, Bill, what, do, what queue depth do I need for optimal performance? So we ship with a default, which is really a sweet spot for most situations, and that is a queue depth of 32. So what is the queue depth? It's the number of commands that we can have in flight at any one time. If my queue depth were one, my I.O. processing would be sequential. I could send one command out, and I couldn't send another command back until I had a return on that. So with 32, we now know we can have 32 commands in flight. Now, take into consideration that we have multiple servers with potentially multiple adapters talking through the SAN to, excuse me, individual storage processors. If we set the wrong queue depths, we can overload these storage processors. And what happens when you overload them and you have too many commands, read-write requests coming in, if they're busy, they're going to return I'm busy or queue full. When that happens, the command needs to be reissued. The end result is lower I.O. volume, which of course impacts your performance. So taking into consideration the queue depths, we hit our sweet spot at 32. Um, what I want to caution you, though, is to understand that queue depths are more of a throttling mechanism. The adapters themselves are each capable of handling thousands of simultaneous commands. When you have multiple adapters capable of handling thousands of sim simultaneous commands, speaking to a limited number of storage ports, you do set yourself up into a position where you can get into those queue busy or queue full scenarios, which again, decrease your I.O. volume. So I'll caution you that while playing with queue depths can change your performance, increasing it doesn't necessarily garner you better performance. In some cases, especially in a real busy scenario like this where we have oversubscription, actually decreasing this number, and I typically do it within increments of eight. If I go from 32, I'll jump down maybe to 24, maybe I'll go to 16. Uh, and then run some tests to see how performance works at that point. But keep in mind, too high can run too slow. Too low can run too slow as well. That's why we work on the sweet spot. 
and changes to this, although they're dynamic and easy to make, do them in small increments when, uh, when looking at performance changes. A couple of other things that I would like to make of note that we do have inherently within the product that can increase performance. One is something called endport ID virtualization. What endport ID virtualization is, is it gives the ability for an individual VM to register its own worldwide port name with the switch and have that entry in the name server. In doing that, that allows us to take advantage of the QoS capabilities that our switch vendors provide. So if we have a VM with a higher SLA, we can identify it uniquely on the SAN, we can put it into that QoS framework and work it from there. A couple of other features that we put in, and it's all around CPU efficiency, message signal interrupt, where we can uh, sequentially process more interrupts per HBA without interrupting the CPU or increasing the CPU's workload, and then interrupt coalescing again in how we interact with the CPU in maintaining better efficiency for leaving the CPU to do the job of running your workload. So in summary, when looking at architecting for optimal performance in virtualized environments, we understand the potential oversubscription, we've discussed quality of service and how we can utilize endport ID virtualization to maintain higher service level agreements, and we talked a little bit about queue depths and how they can negatively or positively impact performance. I hope you found this information helpful. I'm Bill Fields with Emulex Chalk Talk.